Good morning, Richard Calhoun. We're here to talk about Silicon Valley and then the Greater Bay Area real estate marketplace. I'm Richard Calhoun, Creekside Realty. My contact information is on the bottom of every slide. This is a summary sheet of the information that we're going over. Here is the actual individual slides that we'll be going over in the next 40, 35, 40 minutes. One of the things that's real important when you're looking at statistics is to figure out what the metric is. There was an article that came out from the county assessor, Larry Stone, about the decrease in the assessment evaluation. And it wasn't a decrease, it was just the lowest increase, and the increase was 6.6%. They have the advantage of a 2% increase on everything. But it's real important to look at it because even though it was just a release study or information, it was information from the calendar year of 2022 which is completely different. And they're supposed to be using the valuation of January 1st of 2023, which is just about the bottom of the marketplace. It's real important to understand what people are talking about and what data they're using. Let's jump in it. Here's the summary again. Here's the first heat map. So what we're doing here is we're simply looking at the number of active listings compared to the active list number of active listings in that geographical area over the last 10 years. You can't just say how many listings are available. The reason you can't do that is each micromarket has a different size to it, so their normal would be a different number. But you can do a ratio, and I'm using a 10-year median. So right now, for example, if we go down to, say, Saratoga Las Gatas, it's at 73% of its 10-year median. There's less inventory than there normally is, and you can see for Santa Clara County, that's pretty much true across the board, right around 75%, rough numbers. And then if you jump into San Mateo County, it's right at 100% or in some cases like the Bay Cities, which are things like Belmont, San Carlos, San Mateo, they're at 120% of the normal inventory. And if you go into Alameda County, I don't have the individual micromarket areas, but I do have the county-wide data, and they're sitting there at 71%. A shortage of active listings favors the seller. That's why the red color. But flipping over and looking at the offer side, the buyer side, what buyers are doing, there's also a shortage of buyers, and the shortage of buyers favors the buyers because there's less competition. And you can see that there is no area that is really hot. Some of the hottest areas is right around three quarters of a percent, and some of the slowest areas or lowest areas are around 58 percent, except for the San Mateo Coast, which only has one third the activity, the number of offers you'd expect. In a free economy, what's real important is the supply-demand ratio. The supply is the active listings. The demand is the number of offers. And here's the ratio. In Santa Clara County, you can see we're right about 100% or a little bit below. It's basically saying you're having a little bit faster-paced marketplace than you normally would based on the past 10 years. You jump up into San Mateo County, and they're running somewhere around 200% the DUI you'd expect. So they're half as slow. In other words, if their DUI is normally somewhere around 20, their DUI is now at 40. DUI is dates of unsold inventory, how long you take to sell the existing inventory. If you go into Alameda County, they're basically right at 100%. So their theoretical speed of their marketplace is exactly where you'd expect it to be. Now we're going to look at dates of unsold inventory, raw numbers. And the reason you can look at these in raw numbers is because the it's the ratio between the number of offers and the number of active listings. So as the size doubles, both numbers should double. What it's interesting in this, as you spend a lot of time in the data, as I do, you find out some areas like Saratoga, Las Gatas, and the South County areas actually have a slower marketplace, generally speaking, than the Valley as a whole. But I grouped everything in to keep it simple or simplify it. 40 to 80 is what I call a balanced marketplace. Now, down here, I'm saying basically 42 to 78 because that's six weeks to 11 weeks is your balanced marketplace. Anything under six weeks is going to be a red hot seller's marketplace. Anything over 11 weeks is going to be a nice cold buyer's marketplace. And you can see that the expensive areas in San Mateo County are sitting at 160 days and the coast is 152 days. From this point of view, definitely a slow marketplace. Now we're looking at the days on market. This gets skewed a little bit because it's only looking at the properties that do successfully sell. If you have a slow area where 10% of the inventory is simply not selling, that those listings, the slowest 10%, never come into this data because it's 
the days on the market at the time the offer comes in. So you have to have an offer come in to get this number triggered. You can see some areas like Cupertino, Sunnyvale are sitting there at a low of nine days. The highest number I'm seeing right off my bat is down here in Oakland at 36 days. This is what I call the real typical seller. It's sort of an easier to understand benchmark. How long does it take to for the most sellers to sell their property, most successful sellers to sell their property? And the when I say most, it turns out to be 75%. So three quarters of the sellers are selling their property in a quicker time than is listed here. And 25% are taking longer. And in some geographical areas, some sellers are simply not successful at all. Now we're looking at the ask price. And this is the amount of ask price adjustment that occurs prior to the offer coming in. The huge, huge advantage of this particular data point is that you don't have to wait for escrow to close. As sellers take more and more discounts, you can tell that their expectations weren't being met. That's a strong indication of a slowing marketplace. And it's what I call a tight metric. And the reason it's a tight metric is with most of the properties, three quarters of the properties selling in under three weeks based on the previous slide, the sellers don't have a lot of time to lower their price. And therefore, something like 80% of the, of the pro sellers never reduce their price. And in a hot marketplace, it may be as high as 90 or 95%. When you're doing an average over everybody, which is what this number is, it becomes a very small number. And you can see that because I'm basically saying a balanced marketplace is from a quarter percent reduction to three quarters of a percent reduction. That's only a half of 1% reduction takes you from a hot seller's marketplace to a cold buyer's marketplace. But it's the timing that's real valuable. Now you're looking at the frequency of price reductions. How common is it? This tells you what percentage of sellers had to take some sort of a price reduction. You don't know how much of a price reduction, but any price reduction qualifies. And the highest number I'm seeing is in South County at only 28% of the sellers taking a price reduction. Basically, three quarters of the sellers in South County aren't doing any price reduction, which is part of the reason why that number is so tight. But again, the frequency of price reductions is going to go up as the market shifts. So as this number goes up, the market's been shifting. Now we're flipping over and we're looking at the buyer, but now we need to get the sold price. That gives you a five week delay in closing most escrows. This is not only what happened over the past five weeks, but it's starting five weeks ago and then going back five weeks from there. It's almost data from you know five to 11 weeks back, roughly, is where this data is. And in Atherton, they actually, the amount of average offer price is actually a tenth of percent below the seller's asking price. And then if you go down to Berkeley, it's 18% above the asking price. In Berkeley, the sellers are getting almost 20% above their asking price. Oakland, is a little surprising that sellers are getting 13% above their asking price, but that was a fairly slow area. So that, that's almost a contradiction. And there's a lot of those little contradictions, which is one of the reasons why you want so much data it is to really get an understanding of what's going on in any given mi micro market area that you're interested in. This is the frequency of overbidding. So how common is overbidding? South County is at 47%, but here you come over to the expense varies in San Mateo County, and I think that's going to be the lowest at 42%. The coast is not far behind at 44%. Even though the coast is only selling one-third the volume of properties that it should be selling, 44% of the sellers that are successful in selling are getting more than their asking price. So this gives you the frequency. The magnitude is how much. This is how common. Now we're looking at the appreciation since the last nine months of 2015. You might want to say, why didn't I use the whole calendar year of 2015? It's very simple. When you look at the data, prices tip that year and typically go up very quickly in the first quarter of the year. And so you have a rapidly rising price point. And to include that would just destabilize the data. By taking only from April 1st onward, the market's a lot more stable. There's not lack of knowledge on what the market value is, and you get a better number. This is the amount of appreciation since those last nine months. And the low one I'm seeing right here appears to be Los Altos, Palo Alto in Santa Clara County at 43% appreciation. The high one was down here in Fremont at 95%. And basically, when you look at this, you can see the west side of the valley is basically 
has the least amount of appreciation. If you go over into the East Bay and then come basically right down 880 or Lawrence Expressway and to the east, it's had the highest appreciation. And that's basically, in my opinion, directly related to COVID. This used to be close to the job centers where people had to go into work and were paying a premium. Now the people are only going to work less often, more flexible of when they start and leave work. The, the, the premium they're willing to pay to be close to work has decreased, making this area less desirable for the lower appreciation and making the further away areas more desirable and therefore the higher appreciation. Almost everybody follows the median price, which is the middle number. In addition to following the median price, I follow what I call the 10 percentile and the 90 percentile price, the lowest number and the highest that you would expect the homes to sell for in the area. In every micro market area, the number to the left is the cheapest price you'd expect to see a single family home going for. And you can see in Santa Clara County, the lowest you really can expect to find a single family home for is $850,000. If you go down into Alameda County, it's 760 in San Leandro, San Leandro and Hayward, or down to 540,000 in Oakland. And then the number in the middle, as I said, was the median. And the number on the right-hand side is the most expensive 10%. So it's hard to spend more than the, the number on the right-hand side. So if you go into the expensive areas in San Mateo County, you'll see that you can spend somewhere right around $11 million fairly easily. But once you start going over $11 million, and you can go over $11 million, it gets harder and harder because there's fewer and fewer of those properties available and, you know, in existence even. Again, here's a summary of all the data that just we went over. You either start on the left-hand side with the geographical area you want, and then you read your market conditions, or you start on the right-hand side with the price point or the monthly payment here. And the monthly payment, I'm using the Federal Reserve rate. And interest rates have been bouncing up and down a lot. They're in an upward trend. And so it depends a little bit on what the interest rate is on the day that I go and get it. And I'm using the same day. So I go and look at Wednesday morning and what the rate is. And that's what I use. It's a good comparison. The reason it doesn't have a payment is because the formula for all of them is the same. So the color code would match the sold price. And typically to the left side, the blue is a buyer's market. The red is a seller's marketplace. Over here from appreciation on, it's just which has the greater appreciation and which has the higher sale price. And that would be red in color. Now, instead of focusing on the micro market areas, we're taking all 20 micro market areas in the three counties, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, and Alameda County, and putting them in a blender and seeing what's happening. And we're comparing it to the 10-year normal. And that's what I call typical. If you're having a 10-year normal marketplace, you're going to be right here on the horizontal line at 100%, and the purple is inventory. So right now, you have 77% of the inventory you'd expect to have, and you're only having 70% of the offers that you would expect to have. And it's also noteworthy, look how rapidly the number of inventories increased compared to normal. That's caused the DUI to go up fairly significantly, and I'm just going to guess some numbers here, something like uh, 90% percent to 103 percent and that's in a fairly short period of time so the market is definitely slowing and it's slowing more rapidly than it typically does in fact this graph only tells you it's slowing more rapidly than it typically does you have to be looking somewhere else to see that it's actually slowing this table is basically for the bottom line we're having the ninth slowest year out of the last 10 last year was slower with only 1741 offers this year, we beat it out by roughly 75 at 1816, and it's the 23rd lowest number of offers out of the past 25 years. So there's still clearly a lack of offers going on. It's We're not in the worst year right now for the last two weeks, but we're pretty darn close. This is looking at the monthly payments. And again, this is for all of Silicon Valley. So the cheapest you can buy a single family home for is around $7,400. This assumes 20% down, 80% financing, also assuming that you're not getting a discount for a huge amount of assets being transferred to your lender. 13,000 is basically the typical monthly mortgage payment and 28,000 would be your most expensive payment. And obviously at the higher end, most people aren't only putting 20% down, they have a previous house they're selling, they're liquidating stock from their investments or whatever. It's rare to see someone having a $27,000 a month mortgage payment.
This is another data point that's sort of unique to my set of data. And that's looking at the ask price reductions over the week. So each line, the purple line is the current week. So let's talk about that. Basically, it's saying that 5% of the sellers have taken a 90, a 92, so an 8% price reduction. And then come out here and you have 10% of the sellers are taking a 6% reduction. And that's how you go through this. And each week on here is a distribution for a week or a month. Let's just start through here. There's 11 months ago and 10 months ago was the bottom. And five months ago, right there is the peak. And now you can see we're on a downward trend and we were fairly stable in a tight area right through this period of time. But in the last couple of weeks, starting basically two weeks ago, we've really jumped down. And I believe that based on past track record, we will continue to jump down and we'll end up, I don't think we'll get down to the blue dotted line down here, but we'll probably get down to the range of the yellow line. And we're going to be doing that over the next couple of weeks, actually. I expect this drop to become more and more significant. That's one of the things to keep in mind about real estate. It's a very cyc cyclical, cyclical adventure. And you have to compare things to not only are they increasing and decreasing now, but are they increasing or decreasing more than they normally do? Now we're looking at sort of the same concept here, but we're looking at the overbid. So this is what buyers do. Now there's a lag time and there's also a little bit more stability because escrows take different duration of time. So you spread out the peaks and the valleys a little bit. We start off at 12 weeks and we go back to three weeks. Right there was the bottom about six weeks ago. We were basically at the peak three months ago, and we're just basically bouncing around the peak. And there really is no real discernible decrease yet. And I would be expecting that decrease to be happening. But if the sellers are reducing their asking price, then buyers don't have to reduce their overbid amount. And maybe that will stay fairly stable. I would expect it to come down some. I don't expect it to come down anywhere near this level. You know, I would maybe pick this couple line group line through here. So I would expect to see that start to decrease fairly soon and fairly significantly compared to where it has been doing. I would expect the list price to do it five weeks earlier. So we're still close to five weeks away from this happening because I would say that the list price hasn't started to drop until maybe last week. Here's the cyclic nature that I was talking about. The gray line is the typical. That's the inventory you'd expect. See, you start off of the year with about 1,400 listings. You get all the way up to about 3,300 listings, and then you come back down to 1,400. So this is a moving 10-year median, which is why the shape of the current year is slightly different than the shape of the previous years. But what it does is the red line is the hottest marketplace. The blue line is the coolest marketplace because a lot of inventory is a cool marketplace. The typical's in the middle, and the red hot is the least you'd expect at 2,000. So we're basically somewhere around 50 listings above the least you'd expect. The lack of inventory, again, is noteworthy. And the inventory is growing, but it's growing at basically the rate you'd expect it to be. It's not going, leave, it's not leaving the red line and approaching the gray line. It's staying right on the red line and it has since the beginning of second quarter of this year. We're now looking at the number of offers accepted in the same concept, but here a low number of offers being accepted as a cool marketplace, which is why the purple line is right, happens to be right on top of the blue line. We're having sort of the least number of offers expected uh, accepted that you would expect. You'd expect 2,600. We're only getting 1,800. And in a hot marketplace, we've had as much as 3,100. Now we're looking at days of unsold inventory. So this is the ratio between the two, which is probably the far more important between the th uh, three data sides that we've looked at so far. And you can see we're right at 41, which is very close to the 40. That's what you'd expect. So you're having a typical speed of the marketplace. You're not having a red hot marketplace like we did in 2021 and 2020 and the first quarter of 2022. You're having a typical marketplace. And yes, we had a typical marketplace in 2020 before the shelter in place announcement. We do spend time in the typical marketplace. And it's right at 41 days, which is right there in the favoring the seller side of the balanced marketplace. But it would be what I call a balanced market. Here's where we are compared to normal. So you're only 3% above where you'd expect it to be. 
Here's looking at the time on the marketplace. So this is only looking at the sellers that are successful in selling the property. The least amount of time you'd expect is 18 days. We're sitting here at 19. Typical is 29. So we're 10 days quicker than where you'd expect the market to be. And here you can see we're only 66% or two thirds the time of where you'd expect it to be based on the 10 year typical. So now we're looking at ask price reduction. So here you can see the typical price reduction is 1.1%, not very much price reduction. And we're at 1.2%. So you might argue that an extra 10% is no big deal, but when you get all the way down to only 1.9% being the least you'd expect, that 10th percent becomes fairly significant. Between the median marketplace and the cool marketplace, there's only an eight tenths of a percent range, and you're one tenth of that through there, which is one eighth. So you're twelve percent of the way moving from a median typical marketplace to a cool marketplace. The number of price reductions is a little bit higher than you expect, and also notice just in the last couple of weeks it's increasing, it's dropping off. Now, instead of looking at the average price, and the reason the average is so small, I've talked about this before, is so many of the sellers take no price reduction whatsoever. Now we're flipping over and looking at only the 10% of the sellers that are taking the biggest price reduction. How much of a price reduction have are they taking? You can see normally they would take an 11% price reduction, and right now they're taking a 13.3% price reduction significantly more than normal, and you're halfway between a typical and the cool marketplace. And also look at this drop recently. You know, it's a pretty steep drop. You know, it's not that much drop, drop uh, steeper than the cool marketplace, but it's much steeper than the typical marketplace. So we are taking more price reductions than you typically are. And here you can see it on a percentage basis just a couple weeks ago, because this vertical line here is going to be October 1st. So just in the month of October, and it's actually looks like two weeks into it. So from in the last two weeks, we went from a number of just over 100, maybe 101% to 122%. That's the steeper drop that I was talking about. If you were having no change, if you were following the typical marketplace, whatever distance you were off of the horizontal black line, you would stay that same distance. So you can see that this is a fairly volatile index and you can see that we're right now climbing pretty quickly and you can see the rate of climb in 2022 and the duration of that climb here's the frequency so how common is price reductions 11 percent is the least number that you'd expect the most you'd expect is 28 percent. so remember i was saying usually 25 percent in the typical market and in the worst marketplace would be doing price reduction or three quarters weren't and this is basically saying it's 28%. So it's right there. We're right now at 17%. So only 17% of the sellers are taking any sort of a price reduction. A little bit better than or less than you would typically expect because you'd expect 19%. And here you can see it's at 87% of the number of sellers are doing a price reduction. Again, a very volatile index. You can come back to 2022 and see the rapid rise. You can see the fall in 2023 as the market improved. Now we're going the other direction, but not as steeply. And who knows how long the duration is going to be. Here's the amount of average overbids. This is what the buyers are doing. They're at 106%. 105% is where you'd expect them to be. So they're a little bit above where you'd expect them to be. And you can, again, come back and look at the huge drop in 2022, a fairly significant rise in 2023. But this is where the data becomes interesting. This purple rise for first quarter is basically mirroring the rise that you'd expect the low end of the marketplace doing. In other words, it's not pulling away or getting closer to the blue line. But basically, once you got into second quarter, and we'll call that maybe April 15th, the slow marketplace actually turns around and goes down. And the current data actually went up and caught up to the median marketplace. And then basically a month into the third quarter, it plateaued instead of falling. So it's separating and now it's sort of got pretty close to the red line. But here, the red line, the hot marketplace actually started to improve. We have not, but you can see the difference between where, what you'd expect the market to do and what the market's actually doing. 
Here's the frequency of overbidding. So how common is overbidding? You can see we're at 67%, significantly higher than the 61% you'd expect, but not at the 74% in a hot marketplace. And here's the price, 1.563. So that this is on log scale. The blue horizontal or diagonal line is just my best guess on the slope. You can see that in 2021 and 2022, we were way above. At the end of 2023, you can see that the number was real low, and that's what the assessor is using for his benchmark by law, January 1st of 2023. That's the data that just got out. So if you're reporting on this data, you're way upside down compared to where the market is now or where the market was in 2022. So it is important to understand what the data is, why they got the data, and just for the record, I started doing this significant analysis back in 97. I did it for my own real estate accounting, buying and selling on my own behalf. And then clients started getting wind of it because I'd mentioned it. And from there, it sort of blossomed into what we have today. Every decision I make is to try to understand the market better. You know, you have this saying about statisticians. My goal is to try to really understand the market. And if anyone's got another metric they want me to follow, please send me an email, send me an email through YouTube or on my email directly, and I'll look into the feasibility of doing it because I'm at the point where I can't think of another data set that I'd want to follow. But if anyone's got any suggestions, I'm definitely open to that. This is the active inventory. You can see Santa Clara County in the blue has down quite a bit. Alameda County is down, but look at how much inventory has grown in Alameda County. With the growth, increase in Silicon Valley's inventory, you almost could say that the bulk of that increase is probably in one county, Alameda County. And that's why it's important to look at what's going on in the county level, as well as the micro market areas. Things like this really start to show up on the county level. And then it's also important to pay attention to the media when they're talking about Bay Area data. That's a much larger area than Silicon Valley. This is the number of offers accepted. You can see that San Mateo County has the least number of offers accepted, but it's the smallest county. Alameda County and Santa Clara County have roughly the same number of offers accepted. Here's the days on sold inventory. San Mateo County is the slowest at 50, followed by Alameda at 43. Santa Clara County is doing the best at 33 days. So Santa Clara County has the fastest marketplace. And you need to keep that in mind as you leave Santa Clara County and work in different geographical areas, the mar market is significantly different. Time to market, 90, 19 days for Santa Clara, 23 for Alameda, and 27 for San Mateo. That's the 75th percentile of sellers. Price reductions, San Mateo County is doing the most at 1.1%. Alameda next at 1.2%. Santa Clara County the least at 0.9%. Frequency of price reductions, these are all real close together. In fact, I didn't bother because they're all, you know, from 16.6 to 17.3. I mean, I can't even find the blue line. The blue line is buried by the orange line. I'm sure I could have found it if I blew up the scale, but very close together in all three counties. Here's the overbid. Fairly significantly different. San Mateo County at 3%. Santa Clara County, it comes in second here at 5%. And Alameda County took first place at 9%. And it's a little unusual to see the, you know, the magnitude of overbidding to be so much higher in Alameda County. So they're second in price reduction. So they're doing more price reductions, but when they're priced correctly, they come in and come in with the, when the offer comes in, they're getting 9% more. So quite a bit more than any other of the three counties I look at. The frequency of overbidding, Alameda County has the most overbidding at 73%, Santa Clara County at 65%, San Mateo County at least at 58%. Here's the appreciation. Here was a little bit surprised to me. I was surprised to see that Alameda County is now basically ca catching up to the underperforming San Mateo County. I would actually expect Alameda County to be doing well like it was doing well earlier and the reason for that is the pandemic shift. Going out to Livermore is more desirable now than it used to be. But this is a fairly significant change, fairly recent change. Just look at the steepness of the drop. It's as steep as the increase. Don't have an explanation for it. If anyone has a theory, please sh shout it out to me by an email or however. Here's looking at the median price on log paper. 
you can just last week, I don't know if you remember, I believe the differential between San Mateo County and Santa Clara County was only $10,000. San Mateo County shot up dramatically. And that's why it's important to try to group similar homes together. I would say that the price stability is more stable in micro market areas, even though you're not looking at a large data set and it's because you're grouping similar properties, but it also gives you an idea why you can't just randomly look at zip codes. Zip codes don't give you similar type properties. I've spent a fair amount of time grouping areas that have similar priced homes together to get more meaningful data. Here's the same stuff on regular paper for those that prefer. Here's the estimated payments. You can see Santa Clara County is now significantly cheaper than San Mateo County. Here's the actual raw numbers for the three different counties, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and Alameda County. You can come pick your whatever number you like and look at it. It is noteworthy that the number of new listings dropped significantly, 3% across the Silicon Valley. San Mateo County had the biggest drop. Your DUI is basically unchanged uh, county for the whole three valleys or the three counties. And that, that's basically saying the market isn't speeding up or slowing down. Now we're going, leaving the Silicon Valley and we're looking at the Greater Bay Area. Greater Bay Area includes the North Bay, the Central Valley, the Central Coast, and the city, San Francisco and Marin. Reverse order, here's the data chart for you. Oh, and my handout is up already. If anyone wanted to get there, I got it up real early today. Here's the inventory. And if we looked at Silicon Valley, the purple line had looked at its decrease in inventory. Look at the decrease in inventory in North Bay and Central Valley. You know, it's up here at 4,500 and it's coming down here somewhere around 2,200 now. So it, more significant reduction than Silicon Valley. Here's the number of offers for the five different regions. Days on sold inventory. You can see Silicon Valley is the hottest. Central Coast is the slowest. The other three are real grouped close together between 55 and 60. Days on market for the 75th percentile. Again, Silicon Valley is the hottest marketplace, followed by the Central Valley at 29, the cities at 31, Central Coast at 37, and the longest marketing time goes to the North Bay at 43 days. Here's the ask price reductions. You can see that the Central Coast has the most price reductions. Silicon Valley has the least. And, you know, in a perfect world, all these would be in the same order each time. And for the most part, they are in the same order. But there are times when they show up and do changes. Like Central Coast, I think, had the highest marketing time. But here it's got the third best frequency of sellers taking price reductions. So they may take a long time to sell, but they're not reducing their price. Here's the magnitude of overbidding. Silicon Valley and the cities are tied. The other three are pretty close together at the right at 101% or, you know, 100%, depending on how you want to read that. But, you know, the difference between 93 and 101% is only 1% and it's real close to 100. So it really isn't that much difference. This is the frequency of overbidding. Central Coast has the least amount of overbidding. Silicon Valley has the most, followed by San Francisco. And then the North Bay and Central Valley are very close together at 48%, call it. This is the appreciation for the regions. And you can see up here, the Central Valley has had the highest appreciation. And that's sort of why I'm a little surprised to see Alameda County lagging behind. This, I believe, is directly related to the commute. Silicon Valley is next. Central Coast is third. North Bay is fourth. And the cities is doing really poorly. And a lot of people talk about the San Francisco being a ghost town and things like that. It is showing up in the price. This is sole price. So that's why. In million. So 1.58 million, 1.7 million. Here's the monthly payments. That makes more sense. 14,000 down to 4,000. So if you go out to the Central Valley, you can buy a house for $4,700 a month mortgage payments. And with that, we're finishing up. This was week number 43. The green is what I call my root URL. It takes you to the YouTube archive. If you add in 2023, you get to the Saturday morning presentation live. If you add in H and then the year month date code, you get the handout. I try to get it up 15 minutes before the hour. I did today by quite a bit. 
And I'm Richard Calhoun, Creekside Realty. My contact information is here and on every slide. Happy to work with anybody. Does anybody have any questions? No questions. Nice presentation. Thanks, John. Thanks for joining. Not seeing any other mics unmuted. I will end the meeting. See everybody next week. Take care. Bye for now.